Good afternoon. Ooh, that's loud. Good afternoon. My name is Joe McCarthy. I'm the band director here at Neshoba High School. Um, I want to thank you very much for coming out tonight. Uh, it's, it's a great day to be inside and listen to some really, really great music. Um, we are the Neshoba Symphonic Band. We are in year two of our existence. And if this is your first time joining us, I just want to uh, give a quick little background. This started as an idea in May of 2015, and then it finally came up, and, and we are the 105-person band just a year and a half later. Our everything, yeah. And we are everything from, I believe, our youngest member is in sixth grade to our oldest member is uh, a little out of sixth grade, we'll say. Um, we strive for that symphonic band sound, um, and that's what we're looking to do. And, and our concert tonight is themed Summer Dreams. And tonight, I think, is a, is a great dream to have. So without further, further ado, we always start our program with the national anthem. If you are able to, please rise. Our flag is over here. And I present to you the Neshoba Symphonic Band under the direction of Mr. David Bailey.
do very well with these. Well, here we are, and thank you for coming out this, this I'd say, beautiful afternoon, but it's not really a very beautiful afternoon. And we're going to just think of thoughts of summer. We started out with this, this absolutely gorgeous piece by Alan Hovannis, who's a Somerville kid that was sort of eschewed in his day by his, he, he was sort of overshadowed at the, his, in his particular time by people like uh, uh, Bernstein and uh, Copeland and Samuel Barber and all of them, who were being very, very progressive. And he, he, he chose to, to go to a, sort of a different plane of things and think about um, not so much a specific faith, but, but, but music as being a spiritual entity that kind of lives in and of itself. And all of his, oh, he wrote like lots and lots and lots of stuff, hundreds of pieces. And they're all very short, but, or most of them are very short, but they all deal with this sort of spirituality. And I, I think I speak for all of Joe did a wonderful job on the Havana. So it's, it's really good. We're going to move into another aspect of summer now, and we're, we're going to visit our old friend Percy Granger, who was like one of the one of the first and foremost composers of, of music that was actually written for for the band medium. In fact, he wrote he wrote for combinations of just about every conceivable instrument all at once. He'd write a piece, and he wouldn't just write it once; he'd write it for full band, full orchestra, chorus, sax quartet, marimba duet, piano four hands, piano six hands, piano eight hands. And he'd publish these all in, in this, this journal of what he called folk songs. And so his, his music all sort of runs as, as a series of, of folk settings. And he, he was Australian born. Um, he was a very interesting guy because he did much like many of the composers of that particular time. And he would wander around the countryside and collect folk songs that people would sing or dances that people would do as they did them not to take them and, and make something sort of symphonic and, 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 and sort of gentrified about it, but to take it as, as it was sung or as it was danced. And so in the next couple of years, we're gonna be visiting Percy Granger, we already have, and we're going to be visiting Percy Granger quite a lot. And here we have two things, Eubanks and Braze Obadi Dune, which is a poem by Robbie Burns, whose birthday, it was pointed out to me, was last week. Yes, and it still was last week. And so it was his birthday, and so he, he wrote this. It's, it's an obscure poem by, by Robert Burns, but it's, it's indeed indicative of, you know, people knew these poems. These were poems that, were, that every, every schoolboy, every schoolgirl knew. And your, 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 uh, the, the particular person that gave you your education, you would memorize poems by Robbie Burns. You know, and that was all big thing. The second is it's a wonderful piece because it's 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 a dance piece, and every once in a while you're going to hear like an explosion, and it's because that there's there's a step in this style of dancing that nobody quite expects is there, and I think that you'll feel it each time that it comes. So we have a lot of fun. So two two of these folk settings by Percy Aldridge Granger.
first alto sax player, Andy Kern, is joining us to play for um, Harlem Nocturne. Um, we've, we've, so far, we've heard some, some really nice country early summer morning music. And now it's going to be the city. And it's going to be hot. <laughs> so I want everybody to, you know, just loosen your collars and it's going to be hot. <laughs> and to help make it hot, we have Andy Kern here who will make it hot for us. <laughs> I'm not sure what I meant by that. <laughs>
We're going to, we, we, did, were you hot enough? <laughs> Such an answer for each piece. Um, we're, we're going to conclude this half of the program with, with the, the very end of the wonderful ballet, the, the Firebird. Um, when, when composers started writing for the band, it was back around the turn of the century, after, after the Civil War, the, first, the last century, not this one. Um, after the Civil War, people began to take the band a little bit more seriously, and a, part of it had to do with the Industrial Revolution, and we added these wonderful things called valves to instruments, and so they weren't just playing fanfare kinds of things, and, and so instruments developed, and, and wind instruments especially gained new keys and valves and, and all kinds of th stuff that they did, which made them it made them able to play more complicated sorts of things that, that were, you know, that, that, that had a, a real band sound to them and they didn't rely on the, the strings to play um, everything in between. Um, and what they played first were, were, were transcriptions, which were um, famous pieces of orchestral music that were transcribed to be played for by band. Part of the reason for this is early recordings didn't, the, the machines didn't pick up orchestras very well, so they had bands play Rossini overtures, Beethoven symphonies, instead of strings because they could be recorded. So some of the earliest pieces that we have of classical music that people would listen to in their parlors on the, you know, the, the crank, crank up record player were by Sousa's band and Arthur Pryor's band and all of these different concert bands who would bring these things into, into, your, into your home when you were off on a mountain someplace in, you know, the middle of, in the middle of Pennsylvania or someplace. Um, so uh, w there's a whole body of literature um, that's, that's nothing but uh, transcriptions. But some, some of these later composers, Stravinsky, for instance, was writing for wind instruments. And Mr. Longfield here has taken a piece by Stravinsky, which in the original uses the instruments we'll be hearing today. And he does a, a mighty fine job, if you ask me, of, of capturing the mood of the end of the firebird, where the firebird is destroyed, but, the, but, the, but this great sunlight. We think of it as summer because it's, it's like a summer dawn, which has been, it's, there's been a great amount of darkness. And the evil has just left the world. If, if you know the, the ballet at all, it's, it's King Castjai has just been wiped off the face of the earth. And, and so everything's coming, coming to a head, but you can hear about halfway through, the, 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 the darkness is there, and then all of a sudden, you'll hear the sun come up. You'll, you'll hear it in the French horns. The sun comes up, and then there's this glorious, glorious dawn. And we're, we're pleased to, to be back. Steer, steering away from transcriptions for the most part, we're trying to look at transcriptions that capture what the composer was looking for. And this is what Stravinsky was looking for, I believe, and I think we'll really, you'll really enjoy this, this our, our rendition of uh, the, the Versus, which is a cradle song, and the finale from uh, Igor Stravinsky's The Firebird.
you if you'll join us for a few refreshments in the lobby. We'll be back in a few minutes and continue the program. Thank you all for coming. <laughs> Well, I don't often speak before we, 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 we start a number, but the second half is a, a little bit different. We, we were sort of ethereal in the first half. Um, and the, the second half, we're, we're going to get more of a, more of a real summer, a summer in the park sort of taste to things. But first, we're going to play this, this, this piece called Blue Lake. Now, this isn't in the, this isn't in the, well, some of it's in the, in the program notes, but most of us, or a good number of us up here, spent our summers at music camps. And whether we went into music, as, as some of us did, and, 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 or, or whether we just went on to make it a big part of our life, which, 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 which most of us have, this is, I mean, that's, that's part of the wonderful thing about this, is making music for the rest of your life, and not just sort of playing in school and say, well, that's the end of that and making, well, you know, I played in the band. Have you played since? Well, no. And uh, it's, it's a wonderful thing to, to take a gift that's, that's been given to us and, and just continue with it forever. But many of us spent time in, in these, these music camps, and some of them were, were pretty highfalutin, and some of them were off in the woods. And um, there's at least one person here that went to Interlochen, which is a, a national music camp. Um, some of the others uh, went to New England Music Camp. My wife went to New England Music Camp, and I think at least a couple of the others who, who went to New England Music Camp. Well, one other. Well, I was there were a whole lot of them. <laughs> and there's at least one person that went to Blue Lake. <laughs> to, um, but that's in Michigan, you see. But they, they were all over the place. Um, one of the flute players and myself and, and Mark Churchill, who conducts the... the um, the Symphony Pro Musica, we all went to this music camp at this dinky college in South Jersey. But we were all there at the same time, and we, we obviously didn't know each other. We just ended up here, um, just having come for it. But, but we spent time at these music camps, and a lot, of our, a lot of our growth in music, both in community orchestras and bands, and from these music camps, a lot of the repertoire we learned and a lot of the music that we got was from these these groups that were, that were removed from the schools, where schools are limited somewhat into how much they can, you know, put into a certain, certain year. At camp, we would go, and they'd give us a folder of 40 pieces. And they'd say, well, you're going to learn all this stuff in three weeks. You're going to play three or four concerts, and bang, 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 bang. And so the, these, these camps, these music camps, meant quite a lot to, to, to many of us growing up. So Blue Lake is one of those camps, and this, this piece was written, it was commissioned by the Blue Lake camp for John, John Barnes Chance, who was a great, great American composer whose life was cut short through a, through a, very, uh, a very sad accident, which I promised I wouldn't tell what the accident was, but I think I will. <laughs> Because I think it's sort of a, a one one of those stories that um, he he was in he was in Texas in Denton Texas I think and he was showing his children how to put up a, a pup tent in the backyard and the pole got hit by lightning <laughs> so needless to say they didn't learn how to put up a pup tent very well and <laughs> that wasn't very nice but he was but it was just this untimely death he was only 30, 35 or thirty six. But he, he was an amazing composer, and I just, I just find the, the story very ironic. But he, he's an amazing composer, and he, he gave so much up until he was 35, including teaching us all how to use percussion in, in the concert band as, a, as, as one, of the major, one of the major families of instruments. So we're going to play for you the Blue Lake Overture by John Barnes Chance.
driving forces in, in concert band music in the, in the 1920s, 30s, and 40s, and actually up into the 50s, was um, Edwin Franco Goldman, um, who had the Goldman Band in, in New York for many years. And what, he wrote marches himself, which, one of which you'll hear at the end of the program. But his, his big contribution was to, to find all of these famous composers um, and get them to write music for band. So that we have this whole body of, of literature that was written for the concert band. And today we're going to play for you an Italian polka. It was originally a piano four hands piece. And Goldman said to Rachmaninoff, wouldn't that be kind of nice for band? Since it's already in six flats. <laughs> and nobody likes to play it on the piano. <laughs> but anyway, he asked Rachmaninoff to do this for the Goldman Band, and it became a big, a big hit, and it was early recorded back, it was recorded in the, in the 1930s. Um, so here you have it, the, the Rachmaninoff 
um, scored by Eric Leidson, who, is a, who was a, an arranger of some repute back at that time, too. And we have the Italian polka by Sergei Rachmaninoff. Now we're to, to a sort of concert in the park number. This is an interesting piece. The World is Waiting for the Sunrise was a, was a popular song about around the time of World War I. And it's talking about, you know, the, when the war is over and all the boys come back home and this, and this sort of thing. One of those very sentimental sorts of songs. But these were all picked up by, by wind composers and band composers and things. And, Quite often they would write variations on them. Uh, you've probably all heard famous cornet solos and clarinet solos and things based on, based on um, so, you know, a, a, a tune and then they'll do all of this squiddly stuff around it. And, but that was a very popular thing to do. But this is from a, this is an old concert in the park kind of a number. And this, this, um, this fair fella, uh, Harry L. Alford, was a, he was just a professional arranger. That's all he did. He didn't, I don't think he wrote anything that was original. He just would write pieces for, he uh, arrangements of things for people. And this is a concert in the park, or actually it was, I, it, some people say it was originally written for one of the university bands to play on the field. Much, much the same as we now have, have halftime shows they would go out on the field and play something like this. It's sort of a stand in formation and play a concert number and then march back off again. Um, so that's, a lot of people think it's that. Um, but in any case, this is a real stab at the past. And you'll, you'll hear in this the, the, the ragtime sort of thing. And you'll also hear this, this 
uh, silent movie kind of sound. It's, it's very indicative of theater orchestra music in the 1920s. And you'll, you'll hear this, uh, this well, it, it sounds like a chase in, a, in, a, in an old silent movie. And then we'll, we'll have the, uh, the obligatory uh, variation on The World is Waiting for the Sunrise, played by the euphonium. And so we, we think you'll enjoy this. This is, this is a real look into the past. It's a, it's a hard to come by piece, which we've managed to find. And, but it's, it's, it's a real important part of the repertoire that somehow has just vanished because people say, well, what's this, and throw it out. But they, they, you know, it's, it's like anything else. People don't realize what they have their hands on, and then all of a sudden, it's gone. But we're, we're sharing this with you today. The Harry Alford's interpretation concert paraphrase of the world is waiting for the sunrise.
lots of fun. We're going to move into our, our sort of feature of the second half, which is selection from Carousel, um, which I'll talk about in just a second. Um, first of all, I, I'd like to thank, thank you all again for coming this afternoon. We've had a lot of fun. Um, we'd like to particularly like to, to thank the Friends of Music who are our sponsoring organization. And so much of what we do is, is due to the many, many things that they do to take care of us and, and uh, just make it possible for us to be, to be doing all this as part of this wonderful program here at, at, at Neshoba. Um, because we, we, we are part and parcel of the, the wonderful music program here at the high school and, and we're, we're, we're very proud to, to be a part of it. And we thank the Friends of Music. We also thank all the volunteers. We thank the Tri-M people, which is the sort of the Music Honor Society who are helping us out with in the lobby. And that's, that's an organization that's new to here this year, but it's, it's, it's a nationwide service organization um, for young musicians. Um, and I want to thank Joe, certainly, for, for being our host band director and, and for the, I, I, I don't know how I would do everything without, without the many things that he does to, uh, to, to just to be supportive. And last of all, I certainly want to add, add my, my thanks to this, this wonderful group of, of musicians. Um, it's, it's an incredible thing because what we have, we have students, we have teachers, we have former educators, we have people from all walks of life, you know, from, from ditch diggers, that's me, to doctors and lawyers, and, and it's just all walks of life, and there's, there's parents and children here together, and there's teachers and there's students here together, and it's, it's just an incredible, it's just an incredible experience for everybody, and it's an incredible experience for me to watch all of this as, as an ensemble. It always amazes me that you can take a hundred people with a hundred different pieces of music sitting there, and somehow it all comes out, and it just it just seems to all all of a sudden work. Um, we'd like to invite you to our next concert in May. We're doing a, it's a really super program coming up. Where it's highlighted by a piece called La Fiesta Mexicana by H. Owen Reed, and we're also doing the Sweet Francais by by Darius Mio, which is. These, this is, these are major works in, in band repertoire. Um, the other thing is we're always looking for new members. It looks like we have a lot of people up here, and that's because we have a lot of people up here. <laughs> but it's, but we're, we're, always, we're always happy to have more. And if you're here and you're a regular, I see a couple of regular faces that need to pick up their music for Thursday night. And there's some other people out here that I know are, will be joining us for the first time after 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 tonight and so or today so make sure that you come up and see me before you leave and anybody else that's interested in playing please either talk to me or talk to one of the band members and keep coming to the concerts we're so happy this is a love this is a wonderful audience now we're going to move into carousel which is probably the uh well, let's call it the most esoteric of the Rodgers and Hammerstein shows because it, de it doesn't deal with a particularly happy subject. Um, it's, it's a very dark show. It's a very hard show to do and to do well, but the, it, they, they deal with it so well. And this has many favorites in it. Feel free to sing out if you like. And, uh, well, don't do that, <laughs> actually. <laughs> no, cancel that last one. Um, but I think you'll enjoy this. This is selections from Rogers and Hammerstein's uh, Carousel, and then we'll move right into our, our, our march, the, um, the Illinois March, which is by, by Richard Frank, Franco Goldman, Edwin Franco Goldman. Richard was his son who continued the band, and he wrote marches, so I get them confused. But thank you once again. Enjoy the rest of the program, and we'll see you soon.
You've heard this before, but we're going to play it again. <laughs> the Firebird. <laughs>